Hello, today I would like to talk to you about the six principles of creation spirituality. Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Charlie and does not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice. Today we're going to be talking about the six essentials of creation spirituality as put forth by the creation spirituality communities, which is one of the organizations that is dedicated to spreading the concepts that we're going to be talking about on this channel. I feel like I should say from the start, I am not endorsed by them, nor am I an official mouthpiece of them. Everything that I'm saying is my own opinion and based on my own experience and practice of the path. Having said that, I feel like every practitioner of creation spirituality could say the same thing because, well, our experiences are both common and unique. Let's begin, shall we? Principle one, the universe and all life within it is fundamentally a blessing. Now, this principle is one that some people have a hard time with and other people can accept readily and easily. How is everything a blessing? This is particularly an interesting question when we go into the events of the last year. Mm. Global pandemics have a way of making us question the fundamental blessing of the universe. And so we have to ask ourselves yet again, what does it mean for the universe to be a blessing? A blessing is something that comes into our life and brings goodness. It is here for good and not for evil. You see, the main reason we say that the universe is a blessing is because we reject the idea that the universe was created and is cursed. The universe isn't cursed. It was created and God saw it and said, Kitov, it is good. Kol Kitov, all is good. These are the things that make up the foundation of everything that we believe. And so this isn't some kind of Pollyanna where we just ignore all of the bad things and just go, no, you just don't see the blessing in all things because, well, we embrace the via negativa as we talked about in the previous video. The darkness, the shadows, the pain, the suffering of our lives is real. What we are saying is everything is fundamentally a blessing, even when we can't see it that way. This is something we'll be digging into a lot on this channel. Number two, it is through the work of spiritual practice that we move beyond fear into compassion and discover our deep and true selves. Yes. <laughs> yes. A thousand times yes. As somebody who is very firmly rooted in the Christian tradition, I believe that God is love and anything that is not love is not God. Anything that is not rooted in love is not rooted in God. What is the opposite of love? Well, it's not fear. See, a lot of people make this mistake. The opposite of love is actually the complete lack of interest in something. But fear is the opposite of faith. You see, faith is hope. Faith is accepting that you don't know everything. Faith is the power that lets us rely on our experience and know that some part of it is fundamentally true. So I have faith in my friends because over and over again, they have shown me that they are indeed my friends. And that's how faith works. Faith is one of the five powers that really makes life worth living. And we will talk about that more in a future video. But for now, let's just say that faith is not blind. Faith is an initial proposition that we make to the universe that maybe this might be true. And only through testing and perseverance do we accept it as true. But never blindly so, because anyone could be wrong. That's how we get past fear. Faith is what lets us live in a world of uncertainty. Do I know that I will wake up tomorrow? No, that is uncertain. I could have fear and trepidation about that, but I have faith that I have generally woken up in the morning and so I shall wake up again. And if I don't, then that is the way of things. It, it's, it's all I can really do. And it's all that can really be asked of us. We need to, through our practice, move beyond fear into compassion because compassion is the heart of all things. And what is compassion? Very simply put, it's the gold and silver rules. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you, and don't do to others what you would not have them do unto you. As long as you do those two things, you are living in compassion. Rule three, which we talked about a little bit in the previous video. The spiritual journey can be understood as a dance moving between four mystical paths. Awe, delight, gratitude, joy, 
known as the Via Positiva, uncertainty, darkness, suffering, and letting go, known as the Via Negativa, birthing, creativity, and passion, known as the Via Creativa, and justice, healing, celebration, rebirth, and resurrection, known as the Via Transformativa. Now, I'm not going to belabor this point all that much because we did talk about this in my first What is Creation Spirituality video, and my next four videos are going to be specifically about each path. So I'm not going to be talking about this too much here. Let's just say the spiral path is a very valuable tool for helping us understand our lives. Number four, every one of us carries within us the capacity to be a mystic, to be creative, to be visionary and to be an agent for positive change. It is our responsibility to cultivate these capacities for the benefit of Earth and all its creatures. I actually like an earlier version of this where we used to say everyone is a mystic, an artist, and a prophet. I understand why the wording was changed because those words carry so much mm, weight and so much misunderstanding with them. but. A lot of what we're going to be talking about is what is a mystic, what is an artist, what is a prophet, because these, these basic components of what makes us human, of what makes us spiritual creatures in this world, and what constitutes the spiritual path that we follow, are truly fundamental to everything that we do and everything that we are. And I can't wait to get into that more with you. Number five. We rejoice in and courageously honor the rich diversity within the cosmos, which is expressed in every individual and embodies multiple cultures, religions, and ancestral traditions. This is the joy of deep ecumenism. Now, this is a really hard topic to talk about because it is very easy to fall into the reductive mindset of the perennial philosophy that tries to say that everything is saying the exact same thing, or into some kind of a colonialist blind spot where we just rewrite our own personal whims over other traditions. The best way I would say for us to understand this was worded in one of the vows that Rabbi Rami Shapiro wrote where he said that we are each particularist practitioners of a universal truth. And I really like that wording because our experiences are different. Our traditions are different. They say different things. I would say that they have similar, if not the same aims. But when I refer to a Muslim text or a Sufi sage or a Jewish rabbi, I'm not trying to take from them or impose my interpretation upon them. All I can talk about is how I read that Buddhist scripture. When I referred in the previous video to the Heart Sutra, that is how I read the Heart Sutra. It is how I recite the Heart Sutra. I am not telling Buddhists how they should read it. And this is a really hard path to walk. Understanding that your interpretation, your experience of a thing, isn't going to be the same as others. And if you're not immensely and deeply immersed into a tradition, your understanding of the works that that tradition has brought about will be lacking. And yet, it is important for us to learn from our brothers and sisters and non-binary siblings all around the world. It is important for us to see the light that has shone into all souls throughout the cosmos, throughout this world, throughout this earth, so that we can become better and more fully who we are and who we were meant to be. It's, it's just a very difficult path to walk. And path six, ecological justice is our priority as an imperative for healing, sustainability, and harmony among our species and the entire Earth community. Yeah, this is the greatest challenge that faces all of us right now. The world is quite literally on fire. Global warming, climate change, pollution, the general disdain that we have for one another, our ability to just rape the land of all of her resources without having a second thought for what that does for future generations. 
the blindness that we have as a culture and as a globe to the harm that we cause those who have not even been born yet. We need to think about what's best for the world and not just what's best for us or for me. Like many of the things I've talked about, this is not an easy path either. But then again, when has anything that has been worthwhile been easy? And those are the six principles of creation spirituality. Those are the six essentials. Those are the things that we hold to universally amongst ourselves. Everything else is a bit up for debate. As I said, I approach this from a predominantly Christian point of view, but you will hear me refer to a lot of Buddhist and other texts throughout the course of these videos. But again, my heart tradition is creation spirituality, born from an understanding of St. Francis, St. Mechthild of Magdeburg, Meister Eckhart. Actually, I probably shouldn't have called her a saint, but anywho, I did. Hildegard of Bingen and the rest. These wonderful, wonderful thoughts have come into my soul and have made me a better person. And I also want to take a moment here to say, I don't find any of these people perfect in any way, shape, or form. The beauty and wisdom that I have learned from Hildegard of Bingen does not absolve her of being enthusiastically in support of the Crusades. They were vile and evil. And one would think with the level of understanding that she expressed in her work that she could have seen that, but she didn't. But I am not here to make her answer for her sins. In fact, I'm not here to make anyone answer for their sins. My goal in everything that I do is the same as it should be for all of us, to find the light wherever I can, to listen to the voice of wisdom crying out wherever she can be found, and to find and raise the holy sparks back to their place in creation as we work to restore this world. Thank you for listening. I hope that this has helped you to understand creation spirituality at least a little bit. If you are interested in this, I highly recommend that you check out Creation Spirituality by Matthew Fox, which is a good overview of the tradition. And if you want a bit of a deeper dive, I would then check out Original Blessing and then The Coming of the Cosmic Christ, both by the same author. Thank you so, so much. And until next time, may you be blessed in the light of God and find mercy and compassion in all of your ways. Bye. Thank you.